From highways to byways, Eddie Stobart's green and red armada traversed the UK. Flat out at 56. This is precise planning, this is. Having conquered the roads, their rail division is on track too. And ambitions for London South End Airport are sky high. It's exciting times. I think all the airports come together and hopefully get up to a million passengers. Crossing borders in huge convoys, the truckers are advancing into Europe. Don't get this driving up down the M6. The scenery around here is spectacular. But the pressure's always on. Try and keep it cool. The time's ticking on. With deadlines to meet. Slowly, slowly catch you monkey. And challenges to master. You name it, we deliver it, apart from babies. Whether home or abroad, the wagons just keep on rolling. Right, here we go. Place of stop. 200 metres, let's do it. The adventure begins. Coming up, it's inner city hell for urban warrior Jimmy Callahan. An argument with a bollard. Just want to go home. Driver trainer Mick Leach tussles with technology. So I'm now saying I should be going bloody left, right, and everywhere here, but in fact, it lies. And bromance brews for truckers Tim Fox and Mark Dixon. <laughs> no idea what that means. Haulage giants Eddie Stobart stocks supermarket shelves across the nation. A delivery is made on average every 20 seconds, and with fresh produce, they need to be made on time. Dropping to multiple locations in one day means there's little room for error. Well, whatever you put in your fridge and your fruit and veg, that's what I deliver. And one driver who loves the challenge is Scouser Jimmy Callahan. Ex-serviceman Jimmy's been a Stobart day driver for the last two years. Be your own boss, do your own thing. Being out on the open road beats being in a factory any day. It's 5 a.m. at Witness Depot near Liverpool, and Jimmy's coming to collect his orders for the day. What have you got for me today? On the rigid. The rigid? Yeah. You're gonna be having a laugh. Three shops I've never done before. We're in for a fun day, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Right, I'm off. See you later. ta -ra now. ta -ra. As a day driver, Jimmy normally drives an articulated truck, which is a cab with a trailer attached. Today, he's delivering to inner-city stores and requires the smaller all-in-one rigid truck, and he's not looking forward to it. Stall it, I don't know how many times. Can't reverse them. I'll turn it the wrong way. So, look at that, I mean, I haven't got any space. As well as the space in his cab, Jimmy has a problem with the automated tail lift that eases loading and calls in help. I have to ask one of the lads. Dave! Oh, yeah, we had movement there. Hey, he's the man! So, what is it? <laughs> Flat battery. Yeah, I see, I didn't do nothing wrong. Flat battery. There you go. Cheers, buddy. All right, Jimmy. Great, we're good to go. Let's hit the road. With his batteries charged, Jimmy's finally on his way. And we're off. Here we go. There's the first stall. That's the first stall, and it'll be the last. Out of the yard, Jimmy's got a 151-mile round trip, kicking off with a 13-mile journey into Liverpool city centre. From there, he makes the trip north, 22 miles to drop number two in Southport, putting a further 57 miles on the clock to his final drop in Lytham St Anne's before a 59-mile return to base. Issues with his tail lift in the yard mean the truckers already 10 minutes behind schedule. First one's due in at quarter past seven, so we're already late. Already late, an undertaking driver does little to lighten Jimmy's mood. You're having a laugh, aren't you, lad? You see him indicating. Oh, this sound of one, honestly, God. You think it was a matter of life and death for them to get to wherever they're going? It's never that important that I can't wait, you know what I mean? 
and he's hitting rush hour traffic, so he knows it won't be easy. That's it now, stop starts all the way into Liverpool. They're regenerating all this road, and it's a pain in the arse trying to get into the city at this time of day. 20 minutes and seven miles later, Scouser Jimmy hits Liverpool city centre. We are now on the waterfront. Live buildings in front of us. The shop's just a little bit further down. And spots his first delivery destination. There's the shop there on the corner. Lucky okay, enough, like, it's empty enough. As he pulls into place in the 33-foot rigid truck, Jimmy's missing the flexibility of his usual cabin trailer. See the way I turn the wheel there the other way? Taking them in an Arctic. When you're driving Arctic for that long, when you get into a rigid, it's, you know, you've still got your old habits. And this is us here. Here's our helpers. Ready to go? All set at his first shop, Jimmy begins to unload. But the truck's automated tail lift has developed a mind of its own. That's not sad work. Oh, yeah, I've got it. And obviously, you've got the four flaps. And it's trying to put that side down, which is that one. But it just wasn't seen to happen. All four seems to have to go down. But he doesn't let that stand in the way of getting the job done and cracks on with dispatching his cages. That's us, ready to move on to the next one. Back in his cab by 7.45, Jimmy checks his next destination, a 22-mile journey to English seaside resort Southport. Right, that's us, Southport, the tourist route, here we come. It's 40 minutes pounding the road in the sunshine for Jimmy. You can't beat the open road out in the sunshine, stuck in an office. Eight, nine hours and the sun's like this. Nah. There's the store on the left-hand side. We need to turn. Looks all right, like. But as he pulls into destination number two, there's a major problem lying in wait. It's tight, like, getting in here. Look at all the bollards. They've been it in the past. Oh, come on, lad. Come in behind me. As he tries to squeeze into place, a motorist waiting to turn boxes Jimmy in. Can't ride up my ass. You can see me lights are on. I need to move back. Stays with them bollards. They've been here a few times. The urban warrior creeps slowly into position, but soon becomes a victim to the merciless steel bollards. I'll do this, I think. Find out. That's close, that man. I've hit the bleeding wheel and everything. Has the Scouser come a cropper? Find out later. Coming up, trucker Mark Dixon gets a proper eyeful. It's green and red. It's a little bit long. <laughs> the work. And urban warrior Jimmy Callahan faces every driver's inner city nightmare. An argument with a bollard. Come on, I'll go home. Haulage firm Eddie Stobart has a fleet of 3,600 trailers. 3,000 are traditional curtain ciders for general haulage, 280 refrigerated for chilled food, and 150 walking floor biomass trailers for pushing out messy recyclable loads with ease. But they've just got a brand new trailer. It's the first of its kind in the whole of the UK. So now we're going to pick up this trailer that's uh, a little bit longer than what it should be. So, see what it brings. And the first driver to trial it on British roads will be trucking's very own pin-up boy, Mark Dixon. Normal trailers are 30 metres, and this one's 15 metres long. They can be a little bit longer than um, most people. I like long things. <laughs> Mark's pulling into Stobart's training academy in Widnes for a lesson in pulling larger lengths. Now everything's going greener and trying to get more things and obviously less trucks on the road. And this is one way forward. UK road rules state that trailers cannot be more than 13.6 metres in length. But a Department of Transport initiative has just been greenlit. The trucking firm's been granted permission to trial the new longer trailers, which are able to carry more stock on the road. 
He's gearing up to meet the Enviro trailer for the first time, and naturally, Mark's nervous. And yeah, there it is. Bloody hell. You can see straight away now, just by the bloody axles, how big it is. But before he can make deliveries, it's time to get trained up. It's a little bit long. <laughs> no work. It's green and red. First up, a briefing from driver training manager Chris Grice. How are you, Chris? Right, I'm just going to give you a quick walk around on it. Yeah. Give you a couple of details. It's 15.65 metres long. With your tractor unit on, it's going to be 18.6. Bloody All right, <laughs> well within the legal limit. Yeah. So again, you've got, you've got there, you've got to be eyes on your mirrors with your manoeuvring. Your payload, 27 ton on this. The rear two axles, are steering axles, whenever you make a turn, those axles will counteract and bring so the trailer right. around inside the parameters of a normal turning circle of a standard 13.6. Right, yeah. All right. But the biggest thing for you to remember is it's new. All eyes are on you, <laughs> and there's no pressure. <laughs> this new curtain cider is called an Enviro trailer, two metres longer than the standard 13.6 metre trailers. It measures an impressive 15.65 metres and weighs in at over eight tonnes. Costing £20,000 each, the extra length means hauliers will be able to carry 20% more goods per journey. This could lead to fewer trucks on the road and a 20% cut in fuel costs and carbon emissions. Two axles at the rear of the trailer are able to self-steer, allowing for more manoeuvrability whilst turning and less wear and tear on the UK road network. Eddie Stobart eventually hoped to operate 90 of these new trailers across its fleet. Let's get this thing moving. The wheels are turning now on the back of the trailer. That looks bizarre. A few weeks later, and it's time to put the Enviro trailer to the test. Mark's run in the trailer is going to take him 70 miles to a major supermarket depot in Chesterfield, where he'll drop his load of groceries and collect 54 cages, nine more than usual. Then it's 130 miles north to a food warehouse in Washington near Durham, where he'll drop a full load. Finally, it's 38 miles south to another supermarket depot in Middlesbrough, where he'll unload and overnight. Mark's well aware that this longer trailer is a big leap forward for Stobart. Basically, that, what I'm pulling out behind me is, is the future of, of transport. You know, this is the first one in the country. There's going to be many more. Basically, I'm, I'm, I'm the hamster, I suppose, the guinea pig. I'm the one that's trailing it. As Mark, the guinea pig Dixon, gets onto the M1, it starts to dawn on him. He could become the master of the long load. It's nice that somebody trusts me to drive a brand new trailer sort of thing that's basically on trial. I'm the first person in the UK to drive it, so who can teach me how to drive it? Do you know what I mean? Before he gets ahead of himself, he's got to get to grips with his big end. It's a weird feeling when you look in the mirror. It's like, oh, look, you can actually see like, the rear wheel moving. So then you've got to remember, like, obviously this trailer, when I'm, like, overtaking things and pulling out, I'm kind of, like, for years and years and years, I've pulled 30-metre trailers, and now I'm pulling a 15-metre trailer. You've just got to remember you that a little bit longer. After two hours and 60 miles of trouble-free driving, guinea pig Mark is nearly at his first drop in Chesterfield. Off the motorway, he's noticing more about the new length he's packing. Roundabouts for this trailer are easier than a normal trailer, purely because the fact is... It, that rear wheel's assisting me going round. When he arrives at the supermarket depot, the trucker faces his biggest test. Reversing onto a bay with a 15-metre Enviro trailer. And a self-turning rear axle. Every time I put it back into forward, the wheel wants to turn, I don't freaking want it to. <laughs> A shunt forward, and he's about to manoeuvre his lengthy end into position. That's it. Job done. Now on the bay, Mark's packing such a large load, it inevitably attracts admirers. 
Did you notice it when it came in then? Does it look different? I, 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 I noticed the like, back wheel turning. Did you? When it See, came I, in. I know the other ones don't do that. Do you need an, an extra special license then for driving? No. No, because I'm still within the, like, the legal limit of the, the law. Inside the depot and the longer Envira trailer is almost chock full. The big difference today is with his extra two metres, he's carrying nine extra cages of groceries for his next drop. Time to hit the road. You can get 20% more cages, more loads, in the back of the trailer. And, uh, well, they've just proved it, really, because it's full. Mark pounds the tarmac, covering 100 miles in two and a half hours. Good old great British sunshine. It never rains, but it pours. And despite the weather, the trailer does him proud. When he arrives at his second drop in Washington, Tyne and Weir, he's onto the bay in no time. With more length than anyone else, Mark's still getting eyed up. Yeah, I thought something were different about this trailer. Um, what was it, an extra two metres? Could Mark be the envy of every trucker in the country? Time to head to his final drop. After a day on the road, it looks like the trucker has learned how to make the most of his new length. I'm starting to learn what it does, and it is actually better to drive because it steers. You just have to think that little bit more. Newly accustomed to his extra two metres, Mark squeezes his Enviro trailer into a bay, ready to bed down for the night. It feels like, obviously, I've got a big responsibility taking a new trailer that's obviously new to Stobart, and it's like, oh, God. It seems the trucking firm have got a winner on their hands. But nice. It, it's been a pleasurable experience. 150 miles away, having a less pleasurable experience, Scouser Jimmy Callahan has run into difficulty navigating bollards at a tricky inner city drop to a Southport supermarket. Right, man, I don't know what's happened. Fortunately, no harm is done to Jimmy's truck, but the wheel nut covers, fitted to indicate if any wheel nuts have become loose, have fallen off, and some damage has been done to his trucker's pride. Can't believe I've done that one. <sighs> With another drop still to do, the scouser has no time to lick his wounds and must quickly unload five cages. But he knows his exit will be just as tricky as his entrance. I don't know how I'm going to get out, so I'll have to ask one of the... I'll have to ask them how I'm going to get out of here. I think they must... They're going to have to back me out on that main road. Well, if you're not comfortable going out forwards, because it is a bit tight, you just back It looks a bit tight. Really so I can get out? Down. You can go straight out that way. Yeah. Right. That's great. So you, you'll watch me out here. OK, then. Thanks a lot. As he attempts to back into traffic, the truck has got to have eyes everywhere. Watching everything, really. I'm watching me back end. I'm watching that fella. You now got to watch the traffic island as well. And these posts in front of me. Now, right, sorted. I'll get that, lad. I'll get that. Successfully reversed out, Jimmy has time to reflect on a difficult drop. I'm actually out of my comfort zone being in a rigid. I want my heart to back. Give me my heart to back. Two down, one to go. But we've got a bit of a drive now up to Lytham, Blackpool area from Southport. It's plain sailing all the way to his next destination in just over an hour. But on arrival, there's a new obstacle in his path. Well, we've got a silver car sticking out where we want to be. Yeah, where that cone is, we want to be level with that. Just so cars can get past us, you know. We can't, it's a, it's a right of way, so we can't be blocking them, you know. Do we need to be more over? Just back a bit, yeah. Finally in place, he fires off five cages, but the automated tail lift continues to behave erratically. It's our last stop of the day, and I'm trying to figure out why. I don't know. I don't know what's up with it. It's got a mind of its own. Jimmy's not letting it stop him, and with all the cages unloaded, he's all set for the trip home. I'm glad that's over. Oh, I hope I'm not in this rigid again tomorrow.
dodgy tail lift. An argument with a bollard. I just want to go home. But other road users have different plans. Just my luck now, there'll be a car. Oh, there is as well. F she. Oh, my God. Look at that. Jesus Christ. Trapped by a car and the rigid, tight turning circle, Jimmy could be glued to the spot. My back end is going to hit the bollard. Can't get out. I'll have to wait. But a returning driver offers him hope of a way out. Yeah. Spot on, yeah. This is car. He's going to move it for me. Try again. With the car moved, and a passerby acting as a second pair of eyes. It's second time lucky for the Scouser. Thanks a lot, mate. It's back to base for the master of the inner city squeeze. And Jimmy's already come up with a perfect plan of how he'll chill out. That's it, now. Safe. And we're going home. Hope my beer's got me tea on. And a nice cool beer waiting for me. Coming up, driver trainer Matt Eakins gears up for Stobart Fest. Is that supposed to happen? But will trucker Tim Fox's plans go up in smoke? That's that building on fire, though. I don't know what the ding dang do. Haulage company Eddie Stobart has a 20,000 strong fan club. And there's one event in the calendar none of them want to miss. Stobart Fest. The second ever event is being held at the Etihad Stadium in Manchester. 24 trucks and trailers are going to be on display and a crack team of Stobart drivers are charged with transporting them to the location. I'm really looking forward to the weekend, if I'm honest. It's, yeah, it's going to be a good crack. Two of the truckers behind the wheel are Matt Eakins and Mick Leach. Driver trainer Mick is responsible for taking over the Stobart hospitality unit. Oh, she's twinkling. This 13.6 metre long adaptable trailer is doubling up as a Stobart merchandise shop for the weekend's event. It needs to be assembled and stocked before the crowds arrive. But first, Mick needs to get it out of the Widness Training Academy. Somebody that watches from the down ramp coming out of the warehouse so you don't ground out. Ready? Mick's concerned about the unit grounding out. Trucker speak for hitting the bottom of the quarter of a million pound trailer on the solid stone floor. I'll tell you now, I'm gonna need to jack it up, mate. The suspension on the hospitality unit is too low and needs to be manually raised to prevent it from scraping on the floor as Mick exits. It's just jacket air suspension up that rear trailer. That's so ground out going out of here, so that low. When this trailer, like, Setting off, honestly, it's like a rape palaver. Hopefully now we shouldn't ground out coming out. With just inches to spare, Mick cautiously pulls out and onto the open road. Today, Mick is making the 30-mile journey from the driver training centre in Widnes near Liverpool along the M62 towards Manchester to begin the preparations. But he's not the only driver heading to Etihad. Also heading there is fellow driver trainer Matt Eakins. We're just going to take the, uh, the first batch over now, over to Manchester, get them in place, then come back here and then start it all again. So, uh, happy days with that one. Matt is driving Teletubby, Stobart's unique mobile video display unit, a key addition to the event lineup. No, I can't get gear. But getting used to Teletubby's manual gearbox means, for Matt, this 30-mile journey won't be plain sailing. Oh, my God. Is that supposed to happen? As a driver trainer, Matt is more used to an automatic gearbox, which comes as standard in the firm's articulated trucks. The automatic's absolutely fantastic, but it kind of takes the fun out of driving, if you will. So sometimes it's kind of nice to get back into an older wagon and 
try your driving skills out. Finally into gear and onto the M62, Matt re-familiarises himself with one of Teletubby's more popular features. <laughs> the powerful air horn. Ah, uh, it's a highlight of my weekend, that is. It puts a smile on your face every single time, doesn't it? <laughs> With a smile on his face and a clear motorway in front of him, Matt's relishing the thought of the weekend's festivities. I've been looking forward to Snowbar Fest this weekend. Just generally a buzz, you know, just generally a good laugh. 20 miles down the road, his trucking brother Mick Leach is cruising his way to Manchester. But finding his way to the stadium is another matter. That's right, I never trust us out now. Honestly, he's telling me I've got the wrong way. How run is this way? So I'm like saying I should be going bloody left, right and everywhere here, but in fact... It lies. Having ditched the sat-nav, Mick's trucker's instinct soon kicks in. Is that a football stadium in front there? Who needs a bloody sat-nav? Dead ahead. Hi, right, mate. All right, mate. Uh, just up... Up there. Yeah, no problem, mate. Inching a quarter of a million pound mega trailer into the stadium car park isn't so straightforward. Yeah, it's a bit low for this, but it's all cambered. That one, this is going to ground out, it's going to ground out. And not that you don't want stones bouncing up and knocking shite out of it as well. Creeping slowly over the rugged ground, Mix made it. And bringing up the rear, Matt Eakins rolls in with Teletubby. We made it, chap. Hey, can't be bad. Happy days. Man City's ground. Set it up. Obviously find out where about they want us. There'll be a, a grand master plan. I just haven't seen it yet. Right, then. So we're going to pretend to work. With the hospitality unit in place, Mick and the team set about transforming the £250,000 trailer into an expansive shop. Measuring 13.6 metres long and 11 metres wide, the unit has been used as a race car workshop for world rally events and at British superbike contests. Weighing in at 15 tonnes, it comes with a detachable roof that's doubling up as the Stobart shop for the weekend. Inside the trailer are two plasma TVs, a fridge, and an air-conditioned bedroom and lounge area. It takes four men working flat out five hours to assemble. Job done. But the hard graft doesn't stop there. 25 miles away at Stobart's Appleton Depot, tramper Mark Dixon is doing some preparations of his own on his longer Enviro trailer. Make it all nice and shiny. And then we'll go over to uh, Manchester. So what's happening over there? Squeaky clean Mark wants his cab called Phoebe Grace spotless for her appearance at Stobart Fest. Comes up well for a two-year-old truck, doesn't it? I don't like dirty lorries. You've seen that before. I'm getting bored of things to bother. <laughs> I'm even polishing my exhaust now. Ding dang, shiny do. With his ding dang do all shiny, Mark bumps into old trucking buddy, biomass driver Tim Fox. Tim. Back it up, mate. He's got to get out of your way so you can go in first. So, I mean, you can go over there. Mark spotted that Tim's truck, Sarah Gabriella, needs a bit of sprucing up of her own. Where's the bin? Don't mess about this truck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do you like flies? Do you, do you like attractive or something? So it's straight to the washer for a high-pressure clean. But it's clear there are no flies on Mr Dixon. Don't make it cleaner than mine. <laughs> With his truck being transformed, Tim's thoughts turn to the big day. I don't want to be the only partner here, Mark, because he's my favourite driver. <laughs> I've no idea how much that means. Things just keep getting better for Tim as he admires his spick and span truck. <laughs> look at that! That's because I'm looking after my truck. Two years old, still looks like new. The biomass maestro hits the road to Manchester, closely followed by Mark and his lengthy Enviro trainer. Do my like only bit of driving today. Twitter sensation Mark turns his thoughts to the expected crowds. Last Sturbart Fest saw about 6,000 turn up. So it was busy. But Tim has his own theory on how superstar Mark's managed to attract 20,000 Twitter followers. Mark. 
and he has his teeth whitened. And he's bought a new wig and all for tomorrow. Well, he's bald. That's, a, that's not real there, honey. He's a wig, he was a tooth, he was a piece. You watch if the wind changes direction, it comes up like that. It's a steady cruise to Manchester for the dynamic duo, and they're soon a stone's throw from the Etihad Stadium. Nah, it's not far from here now. Basically, this is just a ring road now. But just minutes away, the truckers run into a problem. That building on fire, though. See flames just looking out at top. That's a building on fire. Oh, I'll get past it before they shut the frigging road. Oh, they already have shut the road. Oh, shite. It's not just the delay Tim and Mark are worried about. The fire poses a threat to their squeaky clean trucks. See all the smoke now is going to fill up my lorry, all the black soot. So that put soot on my wagon, I play bloody hell. So you get the fire engine round there and wash the wagon off, first floods that put in there, mate. With the road ahead closed because of the fire, it's a major setback for Mark and Tim. They could be in for a long wait. And Tim's getting impatient. I can do a U turn here. <laughs> can he get that big trailer out in one? I don't know what the ding dang do. The Enviro trailer Phoebe Grace is pulling is longer than Tim's biomass trailer. And Mark knows it's going to be tricky to get it turned around in this tight space. I think we had to turn around. It's going to turn it up around here anyway. But with the clock ticking and the soot pouring from the skies, desperate times call for desperate measures. So Tim signals to make the turn. We're going to have fun again trying to turn it around. Tim expertly whips round the biomass trailer, but it only highlights to Mark the challenge on his hands. God, he's only just got freaking round with that. Mark wrestles his wheel through 180 degrees. The Enviro trailer's self-steering rear axle helps him avoid the curb. Interesting. Anyway, we're going to um, Manchester City football ground now, look. Back on course. The truckers back on track to the Etihad Stadium. Hang on, that's obviously it, because there's still about trucks there. Well, we've, we've got past the burning buildings. The football ground's just up here on our left, and we've got gate three we want. Mark and Tim finally roll in and get parked up. And on their tail is another trucking legend, tramper Ashley Maddox. So I'm just going to pull up now, see where they want us to put this, and uh, await further instructions. Once parked up, Ashley doesn't waste any time checking out this year's top picks at Stobart's merchandise shop. They've got everything ranging from uh, thick winter warm coats to uh, polo shirts, T-shirts, Mugs, key rings, school bags, you name it, it's here. But there's one thing in particular that's caught Ashley's eye. A limited edition Stobart Fest Mark Dixon Ding Dang Do t-shirt. Mark's biggest fan. With the trucks in place, Ashley and Tim Fox decide to reveal all to Mr Ding Dang Do. Oi, Dixon! With Tim and Ashley all kitted out, they're soon on the hunt for an autograph from superstar Mark. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> Make sure you put your phone number on. And your address. Oh, yeah? Mark's first two groupies, first two T-shirts. That's it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're hanging on to his court tail. <laughs> Cheers, lads. <laughs> That's off on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's signed, sealed and delivered for our three musketeers. Tomorrow, trucking's hottest event kicks off. Coming up, there's trouble at Stobart Fest. Oops. As Mick Leach gets trigger happy with his trucker's horn. Twenty-four trucks are immaculately displayed and lined up at the Etihad Stadium in Manchester. Including the horse box, a rail truck, a tanker, 16 rugby trailers, a 61-foot road train, a biomass trailer and much, much more. It's 8am and the drivers are busy making final preparations. Obviously, people got high expectations. 
They're coming here to uh, meet some of the drivers and look at some of the trucks. So we want them looking spick and span. Just a little bit of torch up. I'm cleaning somebody else's lorry now, look. That's how dedicated we all are to the stove out. I'm actually really looking forward to opening the gates and see if they take the time to stop and have a chat with us. Uh, that will kind of make my day. With the trucks cleaned and the drivers in place, it's time to unleash the spotters. Within minutes, each driver is inundated with a group of autograph-hungry, adoring fans. Hiya. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. Big smile. Spotters from all over the nation are thrilled to meet their heroes. We've yeah, driven yeah. down from Scotland. Sure. How about the inshale? What's your favourite truck, Zach? Favourite race. Favourite race. And I've got two favourites, it's you and Mark. Oh, bless ya. I don't really want to look to see how long the queue is because I'll just focus on the ones in front and I'll just keep going and going and going until we've actually got to the last one. Where else are you had to so many people? <laughs> and that's just what eight-year-old Melissa from Preston is after, from each of the drivers she meets. Can I have a hug? Oh, of course you can. <laughs> there you go. Can I have a hug? Oh, that's lovely. Oh, thank you. It's been fantastic to meet you. Please, can I have a hug? Of course you can! <laughs> Melissa may be in seventh heaven with the drivers, but it's the trucks that are transporting super spotter Dale Dickinson onto Cloud Nine. Teletubby is here, which is an absolutely fantastic spot. First time I've seen Teletubby. Ali, beautiful truck. Um, fantastic horse box. Again, new spot for me. So it's great to be here. And, and get so many good spots. The trucks are absolutely beautiful. I love them. Only it seems Dale's nearest and dearest isn't feeling the trucking love. My girlfriend's given me an hour to be here. It's not long enough. She's not best chuffed that I'm here, to be honest, but that's dedication for you. And there's thousands of dedicated fans all over the festival. The hospitality unit Mick Leach delivered is now assembled into a shop that's doing a roaring trade with spotters. Promotions manager Andrew Kidd and the Stobart merchandise team are run off their feet, keeping the shelves stocked. The till's been busy, it's in fact been manic. Queues are 10, 15, 20 metres long. The only thing I don't think we'll sell this time is umbrellas, it's unless it's for the shade. Limited edition Mark Dixon Ding Dang Do t-shirts are proving to be top sellers. And that's not the only special item Andrew has lined up for the fans. We've got a new rail truck, which is in the Stobart Blue livery, so that's about to be a hit with collectors today. Eight-year-old James from Mansfield is one young collector more than happy to face the half-hour lines to get his hands on the prized truck. Can I have this rail truck? Yes, I'll put it for you. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. I'm really um, happy now that I've got it. I, I thought they might have been sold out because it is a limited edition. People want to get it quickly, like me. As one satisfied customer makes tracks with his truck, driver trainer manager Chris Grice is busy organising a special midday horn salute. Just now prepping all the lads up with the keys to the trucks so that we can do. Should have been a 12 o'clock salute. A little bit late with this. Everybody will be able to hear it across Manchester tonight when the horns go. This is now for Teletubby Horn. Chris is going to trigger the horn salute himself in Teletubby, utilising Teletubby's powerful air horn to initiate the cacophony of noise. That's if he can get the air horn working. We're just waiting for the air to build up now, so I've got enough to blow the horn. The countdown commences, and as Chris struggles, the other drivers stand poised over their horns. We're waiting for Teletubby in the corner, um, just to sound his horn, and as soon as he sounds his horn, then all the rest will start sending theirs like running behind the midday deadline chris decides to fire the salute from an alternative truck i'll use, I'll use patina down on the bottom end i'll go and do that now all right only trigger happy mick leach has other plans because obviously i work with matt i work quite closely i've just set my on off a little bit too early there and everyone follows suit I've sewed them all going now, Anna. <laughs> all the way, all the way, all the way. <laughs> Oops. Hold it down. <laughs> Glenn will be going, no, no, not now. Wait. 
I don't know if that was when I met him do it, but that's when I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bit impatient there. That was the official start of Salute of uh, Stop Art Fest of 2012. There we go. Done it. Over the next three hours, the drivers continue to sign autographs, pose for photographs, and chat to the swelling crowds. Do you know right? Are you doing OK? Like, uh, like I say, I've just trained to talk to people as we're actually signing as well, and uh, I think my name is a lot longer than everybody else's here, so it takes longer to write it. <laughs> Basking in Manchester sunshine, trucking buddies Mark Dixon and Tim Fox even snatch time for a catch-up. The old knees are creaking! <laughs> You all right, mate? I'm all right, Flo. Looking a little bit red. Yeah, just, just a little bit. <laughs> so you're right, look, might as well sit up a little bit. But Tim's not the only one who's feeling hot under the collar in the sweltering afternoon heat. That trousers and this heat, that's a winner. It's not. It's not. That's not too bad, though, is it? It's getting a bit red now, you know what I mean? I've been quite lucky, actually, because the lorry has cast a good shadow, so I've been in the shade all day, but I should imagine over the other side then it must be baking. My head is the same colour as the top of your uh, top there. <laughs> Red, raw. <laughs> it's 4.30pm, and after a frantic day, the crowds are beginning to leave, and the queues for the truckers are finally becoming shorter. The line's got a little bit smaller. In fact, I think there's about two or three left now. Hey, it seems to be a lot quieter in here, so... The end is near. My beer's calling. I'm gonna get through <laughs> it. I never like to let people go. But one line seems never-ending, as chatterbox Ashley Maddox just keeps on going. You see the end of the queue. I am not budging. If Stobart's want me gone from here, they're gonna have to remove me forcefully. And the Stobart shop merchandise has proved just as popular as Ashley, as Andrew Kidd reflects on a roaring trade. Tremendous. Can't really believe it. We thought last year's was good. This year's has out exceeded this one yet again, so roll on to about best number three. But before another extravaganza, time to weigh up the staggering Stobart Fest statistics. Over the course of the event, more than 15,000 spotters got up close and personal with 24 trucks. In the process, the merchandise stand made around £80,000, with almost 300 Ding Dang Do t-shirts and nearly 400 rail trucks sold. And the nation's favourite trucker, Mark Dixon, was given eight pairs of knickers. But as ever, it's the Stobart drivers that keep the fans happy, signing between them a whopping 50,000 autographs. Absolutely superb. What an excellent day. Got to meet Mark Dixon, which was the highlight of Molly's day, wasn't it, Molly? Yeah? Definitely, definitely going to come again next year now. Tim I got a Fox. kiss off of Tim Fox, he was lovely. I really like Tim Fox, he's one of my favourites. And a kiss and a cuddle from Ashley yeah. Alex. <laughs> and after seven hours of solid autograph signing, the Welsh wizard is officially the last man standing. Hey, thanks Brilliant. a lot. Take care. Take care. Thanks Take care. so much. Bye -bye. See you. Take care now. Bye. Done. We're done. They've all been moaning and wanted me to finish, but I wouldn't go till I got to the last one, and I'm actually going to take a double check now to make sure there's nobody left. And there isn't. I can't believe it. The sun finally sets on a record-breaking event for another year. It's time to go home. Star Wars Fest is done. Until the next time. Next time on Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, ice-cool Jimmy Callahan is pushed to the limit in freak spring weather on one of Britain's most dangerous roads. Just have to keep our wits about us and watch out for black ice. It takes one slip and you're off. It's an eye-watering load for trucker Ashley Maddox when he opens his trailer. All I can smell is pollen. <laughs> if I come out blind with my eyes all puffed up, that's the problem. Here we go, look. Trucking love is in the air as a brand new fire engine rings motor mad Mick Leach's bell. We need wilders on and all that, don't we? Ah. And tramper Mark Dixon turns sailor boy on a jaunt across the Thames. I'm going to go on a ferry, get my duty freeze. I get all excited. <laughs>